Raiders very very active today they had some guys come in and also they kicked some guys out uh they sent Carl Nassib and Yannick Ngakwe packing uh Yannick Ngakwe got traded to the Colts um for the cornerback I believe it was Rocky Sin he probably got one of the best names in the NFL um and then they brought in Chandler Jones Chandler Jones a three-year deal worth 17 mil per year uh, so he will team up with Max Crosby, who also just recently got a big deal. Um, and those will be their premier pass rushers. So that's a nice one to punch. I'm a Ravens fan. Trust me. I know, especially about Crosby and about how you're thinking Gakwe was last year. With them. But anyway, they also they also brought in a very familiar face. Week one last year, Monday Night Football, Allegiant Stadium. The Raiders took on the Ravens. Now... The Ravens, they had their fair share of injuries last year to pretty much every single position on the roster. Um, and their, one of their best cornerbacks, maybe their best cornerback, Marcus Peters, he was out. So that thrust Anthony Averitt into the starting spot. So his very first game as a starter, it was against the Raiders. Now, he's had a lot of playing time off and on throughout the years, and he's even started a few games, um, but coming out opening day on a starter, that's just different as a starter. That's, that's a whole different vibe, um, and he stood up to the test. Now, I know Raiders fans are going to be wondering, man, who's Anthony Averitt? What's he about? Is he good? Is he bad? Well, what is it? Anthony Averitt, he's a question mark. Um, as far as injuries, you ain't got to worry about that with him. He's usually pretty healthy. Now, last year was an anomaly, but you know the whole Ravens roster was an anomaly with how many injuries they sustained. Um, Anthony Averitt, he got hurt. See, this is where, because usually with him, he's like a, uh, he's a decent tackler for a corner. He's a decent tackler. Um, but the technique, in my opinion, has to improve a little bit because it was technique, in my opinion, that got him hurt and taken it out for the rest of the season last year uh it was in the ravens final game against the Bengals. not their final game of the season but their second game against the Bengals, where cj uzama the Bengals tight end he caught a pass and anthony averitt went low to try to tackle him and of course anthony averitt's a lot smaller than him so you're not going to try to tackle him up high you're going to go low take out his legs that's the smart thing to do but he threw like his entire like rib cage at CJ Uzama's lower legs and CJ Uzama's knee went right into his rib cage and that ended his season. Um, so the technique has to be better. Maybe that play was an anomaly for him. But as far as coverage, Anthony Averitt has good speed, uh, very good speed. Um, the thing with him that he needed to work on going into last season was really tracking the ball. Um, and he did get a lot better at that throughout last season the thing with him I know there they would be a lot of Ravens fans that would be down on Anthony Averitt but what I would say about him is that he just needed time Anthony Averitt was a fourth round pick out of Alabama and he at Alabama it seems like a lot of their corners they don't have really good ball skills as far as tracking the ball like well at least the ones that go to the Ravens because you got guys like Marlon Humphrey a uh, good cornerback physical cornerback but he plays a receiver he doesn't really play the ball good Anthony Averitt, same way he plays a receiver, but he doesn't really track the ball good. So I don't think that's a coincidence. But anyway, um, he was doing a lot better job of tracking the ball. And with him, I feel like he just needed more experience uh, in order to really get better because he was behind Marlon Humphrey. He was behind Marcus Peters. He was behind, yeah, I think he was on the team when Brandon Carr was here too. But either way, he was always behind somebody. So he couldn't really get out there consistently. So whenever he was out there, it was really, um, it wasn't consistent. So but now he's had a, pretty much a full season to be out there. So obviously it worked good enough to where the Raiders were like, all right, we love it. Now, Anthony Averitt, um, when he's playing good, he's playing good. But then he can have these games where it's just, it can go bad really fast. Um, against, he's better against those smaller, shiftier wide receivers, in my opinion. Those bigger, taller wide receivers, no, it's, it, it won't be a good matchup. But uh, he may improve. He may improve. But he was like, like last year against Tyreek Hill, he was doing his thing. He was doing a little bit of holding, but it's okay. 
Like, the NFL got to get a defense, like, some slack, man. Like, because I know NFL, they want points, points, points. They want high-scoring games. They want offense to be able to do whatever they want. But they got to get a defense, like, a little bit of slack. But that would be the, the type of wide receiver you want him matched up against. Your faster wide receiver. Your quicker wide receiver. Not the, the big, tall, 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", wide receiver. No, not that one. Because they're going to be able to box him out. They're going to be able to jump over him. No. So... He's going to do fine there, though. I don't know what the uh, the terms of the deal are yet. I, I haven't heard anything yet. Um, so I'm still just waiting on that. Um, but I'm excited to see what he does. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does uh, with the Raiders. So I hope he does well, though. I hope he does a good job over there. Of course, this whole free agency has been nothing but the AFC West show. The Chiefs been doing their thing. The Chargers certainly been doing their thing. Now, Broncos been going crazy with it. Uh, and the Raiders, they been making a lot of moves, too. Uh, so this has been, and, and this is the first official day. Of course, the tampering period, which they need to get rid of, started on Monday. Um, but this has been crazy. And then there have been trades even before then. So it's going to be a fun 2022. It's going to be a fun football season. And this is literally only the beginning.